identify that. Let me retract that. We're going to identify that we're solving for x. So what operations do we see? We see addition and we see multiplication. So first, we're going to deal with the addition and then we're going to deal with the multiplication. So how do we get rid of addition? Remember, the inverse operation is subtraction. Therefore, we're going to subtract 6 from both sides here. And we're left with 3x equals y minus 6. That's all we can write is y minus 6 because y and 6 are not like terms. So we cannot combine them in any way, shape, or form other than just writing y minus 6. All right, now that we have 3x by itself, um, and we've dealt with this addition, now we have to deal with the multiplication by the inverse operation, which is division. We always divide by the coefficient. So the coefficient here is 3, so we divide by 3. And we're left with x equals y minus 6 divided by 3. Now, we don't have to leave it this way. We can also do the following. We said that simplifying is not, or combining like terms is not likely. We're not combining like terms, but since all of this here is divided by three, we can do y divided by three minus six divided by three, which is two. So our final answer in simplest form is x equals y over 3 minus 2. And you may ask, can I leave it in this form here? The answer is yes, but you need to be able to recognize that this is the same thing as this one right here. All right. Now for the last example. Well, next to the last example. We're asked to solve x over 3 plus 6y equals 2 for x. Let's identify the variable for which we're solving, which is x. All right. And then we need to note what operations we see. All right. What operations do we see? Well, the fact that x is in the numerator and 3 is in the denominator means there is division. There's also addition. And you may say, oh, there's multiplication. Yes, there is, but let's use treat 6y as a grouping symbol. So they're grouped together, 6 and y. All right, so we're just going to stick with addition and division. All right, first we have to deal with the addition. And then we will deal with the division. The inverse operation of division, I'm sorry, the inverse operation of addition is subtraction. So the first thing we're going to do is subtract 6y from both sides here. And what we're left with is x over 3 equals 2 minus 6y. All right, so we've dealt with our addition. Now we need to deal with the division. The inverse operation of division is multiplication. So we're going to multiply both sides here by 3. Multiplying by 3 will give us x. So x is equal to 3 times 2 minus 6y. Note that we can distribute our 3 inside so that we're left with x equals 6 minus 18y. Don't forget, we're dealing with literal equations because they have more than one variable. So we're learning that 
We can have more than one variable in an equation and still use the reverse order of operations to solve for another variable. All right, our final example is all letters. Isn't that fun? <laughs> so let's work on it. It says in this bonus, my apologies, in this bonus right here, it says solve AX plus B equals Y for X. All right, solve AX plus B equals Y for X. So we're going to identify the X and we're going to solve for it. But first we need to note what operations do we see. We see addition and we see multiplication. The addition because of the plus B, the multiplication because AX means A times X. So we note that over here on our little chart to help us out. And we're going to deal with the addition first, and then we'll deal with the multiplication. So how do we deal with this plus B? We have to use the inverse operation, which is subtraction. So we subtract B from both sides, and we're left with AX equals Y minus B. Remember, combining like turns is not possible when we're dealing with literal equations, or rarely possible. So we just leave this just the way it is. And now we deal with our multiplication by the inverse operation of division. So we divide each side by the coefficient of x, which is a. And we have our answer, x equals y minus b divided by a. And now what I want you to do is work on the following problems. See if you can solve each one of these for the specified variable. Number one, if I give you A times B times C equals D, can you solve for C? Number two, n plus m minus a equals d. Can you solve for m? Feel free to pause the video and solve it. Number three, e equals i times r. Can you solve for R. Number four, D over T equals R. Can you solve for T? Finally, number five, three X plus Y equals T. Can you solve for X? Complete these five problems and bring them to class on Friday. When um, I was going to say Friday morning, but whenever you come to class, first thing on Friday. And we're going to have a talk about these. Have a great one, guys.